One of the things that that I, that I loved that you initially ask um, a kid who comes into your office is how you're sleeping. Right? Yeah. It's like yeah. before we even do anything or talk about anything, like what does your self care look like? Like, are yeah. you even able to you know be present with me? Because you're not. Are you overlooking like one of the most fundamental things about just being okay in your body? Yeah. No. It's it's one. I am almost hesitant to talk about sleep because I think everybody knows it. We've all heard it. We know we're supposed to do it. And yet the data on it are so ridiculously clear about it being the glue that holds us together. But I have learned clinically that when people are in crisis, especially, I will start with the question of sleep. And if they're sleeping, we will get down to work on working through the crisis. And if they're not sleeping, I will get down to work on figuring out how to help them sleep so that we even have a chance Mm -hmm. of getting them through And I think that um, this is something that we underestimate. And one of the questions that comes up a lot now is like, what about kids where they can't get care? Like they actually need care and they can't get care. And it's getting better, but it's still not great. And part of what contributed to the adolescent mental health crisis was both the surge in need and the reality that caring for teenagers is a highly specialized field. Very few of us do it. And it's basically impossible to scale up the workforce. And so Mm -hmm. the two together made for a really tough situation for teenagers. So there have been a lot of teenagers on wait lists. There still are a lot of teenagers on wait lists. And what I'll say to parents is, look, it's not a substitute for therapy, but make sure your kid is sleeping. Make sure your kid is physically active. Make sure they're eating well enough. Have them do purposeful things. Put them in positions where they're doing service or activities. These things don't, take the place of a really good clinician doing really good work, but they go very, very far, often in both reducing mental health concerns and certainly in helping to prevent them. Another cardinal rule in psychology is self-esteem does not come from people telling you that you're good. It comes from doing things that you feel good about. It has never been easy to be a teenager or to raise a teenager. And You know, one of the kind of broad ways we can walk up to it is to recognize that one of our cardinal rules in psychology is that change equals stress. And I think about if you put a 12-year-old next to an 18-year-old, right, you're not even looking at the same species anymore. Mm -hmm. And that is so much change in an unbelievably short span of time. There's no way it's not going to be stressful for the kid who's going through it and for everyone around them.